In this video, we'll be comparing the Solo light stove against the Luxata tower stove. If you're interested in seeing how these two stoves compare, keep watching. So actually, this is going to be more of a test between the combination of the Solo light stove with the Solo 900 pot. And on the other side will be the Luxata Tower Stove and the Camelwell 1.2 liter pot. And I wanted to compare them as sets because I think they work so well together as sets. Obviously the Solo was intended to be a set. The Camelwell and the Luxata stoves are not, but they're a perfect combination. So let's talk about how the test will run. Then we'll get down to having a look at the stoves. Then we'll get to starting the test. So to begin with the test, like all the other ones I've done so far, we'll look at two aspects of the stoves. First will be the stoves themselves in terms of their cost, their size, their weight, their versatility, and their compactness inside of my backpack. Then we'll look at the performance of the stoves where we look at how quickly each of these stoves will bring two cups of water to a boil and how long will one load of wood last in each of these stoves. I think you'll see though this is going to be a little bit challenging with these two stoves because although they're similar in size and similar in design as far as being wood gas stoves, they just don't lend themselves to a comparable test. But that's okay, we'll explain more about that when we get to the testing. Alright, let's go down to the stone top that I have and have a closer look at the stove and pots. Okay, I have both of the pot sets pot and stove set sitting on my backyard testing laboratory which is just a patio stone on two bricks so each of these sets are in their compacted form as I would carry them in my backpack and we're going to look at the Solo light and Solo 900 pot first before we go over to the Luxata Camelwell combination one of the reasons is because I have not reviewed the Solo before I have featured it in, in a couple of videos where I've used it and taken into the woods but I haven't actually done a review this is not going to be a complete review a bit by itself more of a well it is a comparison against the Luxata Camelwell combination so let's take the Luxata set it aside for a second so the Solo does come in a nice little lightweight stuff sack if they had a complaint against the stuff sacks it wouldn't necessarily be the durability because that's not all that important it's how snug they are they fit the the pots so tightly they can make it a little bit challenging to get them uh, in and out. So not the end of the world, of course, not, not a deal breaker. It's not what you're looking for when you buy a, a stove set like this. So there's the pot and inside rests the stove inside of another stuff sack. And we'll talk more about the pot in a second. Now, this one comes out a little easier because of course it's smaller in diameter. So the stuff sacks aside. Okay, there is the Solo Light stove wood gasifying stove set up and I'm sure most of you are aware that this stove was in fact a copy or at least a near copy of the Canadian originated Bush Buddy stove. So it's a nice little wood gasifier that works extremely well. I've got no complaints against the performance of this. There are a few things that I would like to see different of course. Um, I'm going to give all the weights and measurements for each of these stoves in the show notes below. But what I want to focus on right now is not so much the size as it is the weight. So this combination, the two of them together, come in at one pound, two ounces, or 513 grams. Now that's significant when you take a look at the other combination when I put them together. So what we have is a small, very lightweight stove, very simple to put together and uh, store away. Let's talk a little bit about, more about the stove for a second. So one of the things we like to talk about is versatility with each of these uh, stoves. So versatility wise, I have used this stove with wood and I have used it with alcohol, of course, and it works well with alcohol. And I've tried it with wood pellets. I'm not a fan of using it with wood pellets because of the large grate inside. A lot of wood pellets fall down into the lower chamber of the stove. And yes, I have tried and it does work. If I can find another piece of material, a screening of some type that I can cut to the diameter that has a smaller opening than the wood pellets, and then you can drop that down inside and it will hold the wood pellets up. So that does work if you want to go through the work to do that. Uh, what can I say? Oh, let's take a look at the pot. The pot by itself, 900 milliliters, fold-out butterfly handles, a stand-up with a, a stand-up uh, 
ring on top with a silicone cover on it. One of the nice things, or a couple of the nice things about this, is it does have measurement on the side, both in metric and imperial measurements, up to, well, it measures up to 800 mils and 30 ounces, but uh, right to the top is 900, so not often you're going to fill this right to the top. So the functional volume is about 800 milliliters of water. It does have a little spout bent into it, not, not much, but just enough so that it makes it a little easier for pouring. It does not have a bale, and I've seen a number of videos where people attach bales, either wrap a wire around, put some dimples in and hang a bale over, actually drill holes in it. Um, you know, I don't think I'm going to do that with this stove. I don't find it necessary. If I'm only using it with the wood stove, a bale isn't necessary. If you want to get multiple uses out of it, you may want to consider a bale. The lid sits on nicely, not tight, but just nicely. So there is that combination set up. I'm going to put this aside and we'll dig out the Lixada stove. Okay, so here is the Lixada Tower Stove Camelwell 1.2 liter pot combination in a stuff sack that I made for myself. The Camelwell pot, by the way, does come with a stuff sack. It's not really a, a well-fitting stuff sack. It's functional. It'll keep your pack clean. But if you want a, a better stuff sack, I mean, if you want to, you could always use just a plastic bag. And you could use the one that comes with the pot if you want to make one of your own. I have videos on that, in fact, on how to make stuff sacks, a couple of different styles. And, you know, it'll keep help keep your pack clean. So let's take the two of them out. I'm trying to reach for the bale. Sorry about the noise. All right, so here is the combination together of the Camelwell 1.2 liter pot, and inside I have the Luxata tower stove, which fits in perfectly except for not quite sets in, the lid that is. It goes in a little ways, but doesn't go in all the way. So that's about the only thing that uh, you can say that doesn't fit perfectly about that. But we're going to take a look at them separately. Now, I do have a review on the Luxada Tower Stove in another video, which I can link up in the corner. I think you can see where I'm pointing. Or you can just go into my channel and search Luxada Stove and it'll come up. There's a few videos on Luxada Stoves. And we'll put the stuff sack for a second. Set up. Almost as fast as this as the solo light three pieces instead of two But it does set up very quickly and uh, there is no special uh, Things that you have to do to get it to set up All right, so we'll talk more about the stove in a second, but I want to show you the pot and I have separate reviews of the Camel 1.2 liter pot one thing you'll probably notice is this is black and the reason it's black is because I carry it a lot. This has become my go-to pot for carrying in the woods. I do have a 12 centimeter zebra belly pot. I love it. It's a bomb proof tank of a pot but this has a few features over the zebra that I think make it just a little bit more of something that I want to reach for. Now having said that as you'll see if you go back and take a look at the two videos the introductory and the long-term use video for this which again I'll link up in the corner you'll notice that I did have to make a few modifications or I felt I wanted to make a few modifications to it to make it closer to perfect and just quickly those are these handles came out floppy when I bought them a little tapping on the where the welds are and it tightened up on the handles and the other thing was not sure how well this will show up. It's where the spout is, the holes that where the water pulls out, they were very, very, very small on the brand new pot. And I, had, I felt I wanted to drill those out to allow for a faster flow rate. And that's all I did. Everything else is just stock the way, the way that it came from the factory. So that's the pot. Oh, the functional. What else can I say about this? It also has measurements on the... Uh, well, you can see them on the outside imprinted on it probably hard to see through the sut through the soot maybe you can see them on the inside wall it measures up to 700 milliliters but they're only that's only up to here which gives you the impression that you can get a lot more in the pot and you can but one limiting factor is the lid now the lid as you can see is depressed and sits into the pot quite a distance by the way it does have a nice stand up a nice stand up d-ring something that's very easy to stand up get a stick through if you want to lift it off 
I had a, a viewer comment in one of my reviews that possibly you could use that lid for putting coals on if you wanted to do a little baking. Uh, yeah, I guess you could. I, I don't know that I want to use this pot for baking, but you could. There's no reason why not. What I wanted to say about it is it's advertised as 1.2 liters in volume, and it is that right up to the rim, 1.2 liters but then you wouldn't get the lid on. So with the lid on, you've got a functionally less volume than that. What's the best volume you can probably get in here? Around 900 mils, so just over 30 ounces. So it has just a slight volume uh, advantage over the Solo 900 pot. So let's just take, put the two pots together for a second before we go back to the stoves to get a size comparison. So if you look at the two pots, they're very close in size with a slight larger diameter given to the camel well, as you can see here, and I mean very slight, there's very little difference in the diameter of the pots. Heights, they're virtually identical, so they have a lot of uh, similarities in that faction. Of course, the versatility goes to the camel well with the bale and with the spout. So that would be about the own, and the slight volume increase. I like the D-ring a little bit better as well on the, on the camel well. The other thing we haven't talked about so far is cost. So the camel well sells right now in Canada for $20, thereabouts. You can find it $19, $21, depends on where you look. This is on eBay and AliExpress where I found this, this one. Uh, $20. That's not bad. I'm sure it's going to be much less for my American viewers, and I don't know what it would cost in other parts of the world, but I'm sure if it's available to you that uh, it's not going to be much more expensive than we have to pay for things here in Canada. The pot, on the other hand, is $120. Um, that's a lot of money. I think I may have that incorrect. I'll, put the, I'll annotate the, the correct price on the screen. But the Solo 900 pot is at least twice, maybe three times the cost of a little camel well. Build quality, very close. I would say that the Solo light is, comes from the factory in a slightly stronger build quality. And the only thing that's stronger are the welds. And that's about the only thing. And it's not that they're stronger, it's just that the handles come snug right from the factory. There's no work that has to be done to make this a more usable pot. As I mentioned, I did have to tap the where the handles are attached to the pot to get that a little bit tighter and snug. Once done though, it was done. And I mean, it was just a simple tap tap and that's all I had to do for it. So pots, size wise, very close. Slight advantage in size goes to the camel wheel and definite advantage in price as well as it has a bale. So let's put the pots aside. Come back quickly to the stoves. And I know this portion of the video is a little longer, but I just wanted to make sure that you saw what it is that each of these has in terms of features. So as I mentioned with the Solo, it's just a simple two-piece design. The lid fits down inside. You can use this with an alcohol stove, not so well with pellets. Uh, the looks at a tower stove, you can use it with alcohol, not so well with pellets either. By the way, I'm doing some testing with pellets on this to see if I can improve the performance. I'll bring that to you in another video. Uh, what you can see right now is a definite difference in terms of height. And I mentioned in the review of the Luxada Tower Stove that the height of this gave me some concern in terms of stability. Would it be unstable with a heavy pot of water sitting on top? I did mention also that the diameter of the stove it was very comparable to the Solo. And you can see it actually has a slight diameter advantage, but that's offset by the height. So it's a little taller, well it's actually considerably taller as you can see, but that may or may not come into, you know, it may not be unstable really. One of the things I find is that stability only really matters if you haven't taken the time to make sure it's secured to the ground or at least it has, you know, something to hold, help hold it down. The other time it would come in is when you're trying to feed additional wood into the stove once your original load has burnt down. Uh, do you know this is actually easier to feed. Let me put the pot on and I'll show you what I mean. So 
So the feed port on the solo stove is a little small and what I find is that I quite often I lift the pot off to make sure I get sticks in there so that uh, I can get them in uh, safely without tipping the pot over. And the same could be said for the Lixata. Quite often I'll make sure I've got a hold of the pot when I'm putting the little sticks in. But the Lixata has a much larger feed hole so it makes it a little easier to get wood into it and you can get bigger chunks of wood into it as well. So let's put, pick the pots off again. So let's talk in terms of versatility of these two stoves. And the first thing you have to look at is the size of the burn chamber. So if I take the pot stand off, take the burn chamber out of the Luxata, and you look at them side by side, no question the Solo has the larger diameter burn chamber between the two stoves. However, that's not the whole story because the Lexada has a much deeper burn chamber. Let me just give you an idea. It's almost twice the height in terms of burn chamber, meaning that you can get much larger sticks down inside the Lexada than you can inside of the Solo. Now, if you lay them crosswise, there's a slight advantage going to the Solo, not much. Not a lot of advantage. It's they're close in diameter. And again, I'll put the specs in the show notes below. But the Lexata has the advantage of being able to stack longer sticks in. So what does that mean? For me, it means less wood processing. I don't have to cut my sticks as small or go looking for tiny little sticks that I can just break with my hands. Yes, both stove will work that way, but I can actually take a little larger pieces of wood and put them in the Lixada, which will mean a longer burn time before I have to refuel. So that there is a, an advantage to the, the having a deeper burn chamber here, but that's only half the story. When you use the pot stand in conjunction with the burn chamber, you have an extra oversized burn chamber because, well, I don't, I guess, yeah, we'll put them together. Now I can put sticks in that extend up past the top of the burn chamber into the pot stand area. And what that allows me to do again is even longer sticks. But if you're going for a top down burn, which is the most efficient way to use a wood gasification stove, that you usually want to start with a little bit of a fire on top that will eventually work its way down into the fuel that you have loaded in the stove. You have more room to do that inside of the Lixada than you do inside of the Solo. You can build a little tiny fire on top, but uh, not very much. I find that it's much easier to get the Lexata going than it is to get the, the Solo light going. And I can actually, because I can put more wood in the Lexata, I get a longer burn time from my initial load of wood. All right, so that is versatility in terms of wood. They both use alcohol stoves. Now let's talk price. Price-wise, <laughs> again, no comparison. $20 for the stove. $20 for the pot, you're talking about a $40 combination. If you took the stove, the Solar Light, and the Solo uh, 900 pot, these are Canadian dollars, of course, $180. That is significant. So the question comes now is not whether or not these stoves will, will compare in terms of performance, which we're going to look at, but just based on price alone. What do you want to buy? I'm not disrespecting the solar light. I like it. Obviously, I still have it. I haven't gotten rid of it. Uh, it's a nice compact set. It's fun to play with. It's a lot of maintenance. I will say that. You're putting sticks in constantly if you're trying to keep water going for any length of time. But when it comes to price, you just can't beat either the, so the Luxata Tower Stove in combination or without the Camel Wool 1.2 liter pot. I did mention in the other video as well that this fits in the Zebra 12 centimeter pot perfectly. The lid goes on, there's no need to have the lid raised above the top stop of the pot. So if you already have the Zebra, you don't have the Camel Wheel, you don't want to spend any additional money to get the Camel Wheel, keep your Zebra, buy one of these, drop it down inside, perfect. All right, I think we've talked enough about the two stoves and pot combinations. Let's get these set up for a burn test.